start with the field. Everything is kept. You are confronted with thoughts and acts also of others where you were connected with in the past and also with thoughts of deceased personalities. So there is still access in the patients of the people who have an enhanced intuitive sensibility, like them. They all of those patients who had an near-death experience are open. They have access to the personal thoughts of others. Everything is kept non-local, without time, without space, past the future is there, accessible if you are open. If you open. So everything is always there. That's a different form. So if you ask that, so it means that uh, how you identify yourself, it is the answer to your question. That in Sufism, we are distinguishing between the false self and the real self. Consciousness is the real self, which is an eternal substance, an evolutive substance which doesn't have any beginning and any end. So it doesn't depend at all to the body, to the material body. It keeps going on to the eternity, to the perfection, to absolute light. And the light is the creator of the matter. So it is just the, the answer is there that as a seeker who has this kind of experiences, is preoccupied and occupied by other matters than the body and its <coughs> is why you are here, why I am here. What is the reason of my being? What is the reason of my creation? What is the reason of the creation of human being? So the human being, the mankind, is the last created creature in the world. Why it was necessary for the creator to, to create this new creature? What is my place in the universe? in this moment. So, it is absolutely philosophical and uh, I am ready to answer this question, but we are going to another chapter to that. And, and, and maybe then I could ask the Professor, I mean, that, that's an answer which makes sense to me. I could probably make sense to most people when I'm not there, religious, it's a religious answer. But I mean, is there a, do you believe that there's a non-religious answer to that question? Well, when you hear people who had their death experience and they come back, Sometimes they are sent back by the deceased relatives or by the being of life. Sometimes they have their own choice and they say, I had still a task to fulfill. I had a task to fulfill. And they are looking for years and years what the task is. And I think everybody has to answer this question for himself. I cannot answer the question for you why you are here. And I can just keep on asking the question for myself to understand why I'm here. But I think there is a reason. <coughs> I think there's something else that's just in the uh, non-local dimension where everything is. I think we have, very sometimes here, we have to learn. And it's only in our body we can learn. We have a task, but we only perform this task in our body and not in the other dimension. I think that uh, so the material world is full of potential to become something. And it, does, it is not able, the material world, to change itself by itself. 
but it has the capacity to be changed. <coughs> and mankind is able to exploit this capacity. And it is the mission of each one of us to change ourselves and the world around ourselves. It is the mission, it is the task, it is the reason of our existence, of our creation. It is not for nothing that we are here, everybody. But the question in Sufism is posed like this. Who am I, first and secondly, what I am doing here? We must answer to these two questions, not only to one question. But we have to have something else. In this physical world, there is duality, subject, object. In the other dimension, there is cis, chipta. Everything is connected to unity. And we can learn by the duality. I think that's the same question. Is that when there is no end, there is also no beginning. So there is consciousness before birth, there is consciousness after physical death. There's continuity. And there are, I know some people who have said, also men, but most female, you have the feeling of a baby who's coming even three or four years before the conception. And even though it's a boy or a girl, and even know the name. It's incredible, but it seems to be true. And you can understand these kind of things where you know that this, the essence of a new human being, being is already there and is connected with the physical body. You see, you see that this, um, the start of a, a life, when we come pass through one body, or all that we came from the previous body? Uh, the, the, question, the question of reincarnation is the question re I, I don't know what reincarnates. I think, uh, I don't believe that I, my ego, my physical aspect of my consciousness will come back. I think that in higher aspect, our self, aspects of that higher self, <coughs> come back in the body. But, but, uh, he will, he will know better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, mean, I, I liked your analogy with the radio before, which yep. what I would say is the radio station that keeps on emitting and the radio receiver gets to be this extra to find a new radio receiver for the station. Uh, you can even question about our body if you know that each second 250,000 cells die and are being replaced. Each day, 50 billion cells die and are being replaced. Our body is totally new each year. What about the continuity? It's our consciousness. And, and our molecules are changed each five days. A subatomic level, it's... <laughs> the blank time, I think. It's changing. So there is no continuity. What we think is matter. It's 99.999% emptiness, it's fake, and it's fake, it's filled with information and energy. And that's the essence. Consciousness is the essence, and for me it's fundamental in the universe. So, it, I, I have a little bit, and the point is in the case of the frequency of the migration as well. It means that you don't have only one body. So it means the consciousness is not enveloped in only one material. We have thousand bodies. <coughs> so what is important is to keep going on in the substantial way. So this continuity has nothing to do with the material world. What material world is a step in this substantial evolution. So after, this is the Asran world, and so on. Yes. In your talk, you mentioned um, very positive near-death experiences, but you did say that you'd had some reports of people having negative near-death experiences. Now, I personally haven't had any near-death experiences, but I have on a regular basis lots of um, Tele 
we've come across people who have entered a negative death of, of somebody else. Very briefly, it's a long story, but I'll cut it very short. I was living in a flat above somebody else, and I woke at four in the morning, or I, I, I was in a dream at four in the morning, where I was being forced to commit suicide. I didn't want to do it, but I did it. And I fell onto a sea of writhing, faceless grey bodies. And, um, and I woke up in terror and turned on the light and stayed awake the whole night and went to work the next day. Couldn't function, came home at two o'clock, uh, made some excuse, obviously didn't tell the truth about why I couldn't function. And as I got home, the police were there bringing a woman out who lived underneath me, who had killed herself. Now, I, I know that that wasn't a dream, um, and I know that I had entered some horrible place. What's the point of that? Why should I have to, you know, why should I have premonitions what, about what you, everybody in my family yeah. who dies and stuff? First answer like your, a curse, really. Yeah. First answer your question. You are open. That means you will receive. <laughs> I know. It's a curse and not a gift. <laughs> but what happened was a shared death experience. And you experienced the death experience of the woman who's committed suicide. There's just recently a book came out from Raymond Moody, Glimpses of Eternity, where it's writing about shared death experiences. Mostly positive, but also positive. <coughs> The question is uh, about frightening or negative near-death experiences. About 15% of the people who have a near-death experience have a frightening aspect, which is when they are in a dark <coughs> space, which is frightening. And then they see a small point of light and they're attracted to it, but they, they describe as a tunnel. But about 1 or 2% of the people stay in the dark room or go down, which is <coughs> then to, in Divina Commedia describes as hell. It's from Christianity. And um, <laughs> well, it's just a concept. It's, it's frightening. And um, people who come back are frightened of death as well. <coughs> and I've known, I have known a, a woman who had been crying three evenings for three hours trying to explain to me what happened to her, basically. Each uh, Conscious experience you have is depending of your state of consciousness. What I told you, when you're in love, the world is beautiful. When you're depressed, the world is like hell. And each human being has in his uh, uh, character thousands of aspects, also <coughs> aspects of fear. And when you have such an aspect in your consciousness, when you're just in that as aspect of fear, your experience will be full of fear and fright. So you will have a fighting experience, but you are not there. You create your own reality up here in this life. You create your own reality without your body and spot. So it's a subjective experience. And this can be frightening. And when people know that, there have been some articles about frightening experiences as well, and I quote them in my book. When they know that it is just an aspect of their own consciousness, why they were frightened, they can accept it better. And they at last, the positive transformations. <coughs> yes, I have a question for the Sufi, Sufi master. You know, you've explained that all the Sufi master the experience of intoxication, the idea of perfume and from this guy in the room, and the heavenly. Is it general across all Sufi masters? Because it is a variation. <coughs> <coughs> it's composed of different steps different steps. So, um, what it is in general, so it is the experience of the garden, of the heavenly garden, it's full of colors, and smell, and the birds. And so it is just because of this that I told you that uh, uh, from this moment, we are connected to another here. So we are no longer, really, we are no longer busy 